I tell this show? What? What? You mean to tell me that you got an astronaut handbook? Yes, Green Bear. I can't believe it. I've been dying to read the astronaut handbook, Corny the Unicorn. You have? Yeah, I think it's one of the careers that I'm most interested since I highly excel in math and science. Let's get out of here so she can start reading. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm so glad that you're excited about this. I am too, to tell you the truth. Look at that. How beautiful. Rockets into outer space. Welcome to astronaut school. Soon you will be boarding a space shuttle and blasting into outer space. All different kinds of people have become astronauts. There have been teachers and painters and even deep sea divers and you can be an astronaut too. But how? You're going to find out. First, you need to decide what kind of astronaut you will be. There are astronauts who fly the space shuttles. There are astronauts who conduct scientific experiments such as growing plants in outer space. And astronauts who repair satellites. Becoming an astronaut takes a lot of preparation. Not going to kid you there, kid. Hard work. It's important to study hard in school. Studying isn't always easy, but Stick with it. Let's see what this kid is studying here. Basic Russian. Huh. Maybe to talk to the cosmonauts. Those are the Russian astronauts. Physics. Aeronautics, of course. Environmental science. Biochemistry. Mechanical engineering. Oh, yeah. Brainiac stuff. You will have to pass through some tough fitness tests, too. It's not just about your brain. It's about your body, too, to become an astronaut. So suit up and start swimming. Can you imagine that? I really didn't see that one coming. No, me neither. Swimming. One test is to swim in your flight suit and sneakers. Wow, that sounds hard. But, well, being in outer space is hard. It's also important to be a team player. While in space, you'll be eating, sleeping, and working in very tight quarters with many other people. So, be nice to your neighbor and no fighting. You hear that part, Green Bear? Yeah, yeah, I'm working on my interpersonal relationships, I swear. All right. It's really tight quarters in there. You better like everybody or at least be able to get along. All right. Oh, what is this camping scenario we have going on here? Now that you can work well with others, it's time for oh, survival training. This training will help toughen you up and prepare you to live in harsh conditions. Although I have to say, they look pretty happy out there building their campfire out under the stars. After you're both mentally and physically prepared, it's time for the real work to begin. Ho oh, ho, now it's the real work? What was the other stuff? Practice makes perfect. Those of you who have decided to become engineers will practice working with machines, much like the ones you use in space. You notice where he's practicing? In the desert. Sometimes I think they use a desert because there are certain conditions about it that are similar to space in some way. Those of you who want to be a pilot of the space shuttle will need to learn how to fly. Learning to fly. Learning to fly. You've done the hard stuff. Now it's time to have some fun. Woo, woo, woo. A special plane nicknamed the Vomit Comet. <laughs> That's funny. The Vomit Comet. Oh, maybe it's not funny. Whoa. <laughs> well, the Vomit Comet will take you high in the sky and then zoom back down. As a result, you'll be able to float, just like in outer space. It might upset your stomach. That's why they call it the Vomit Comet. But you'll get the hang of it. You'll also need to pick the food you'd like to eat while you're in space. Ice cream! Ice cream! I hear that the outer space ice cream is out of this world! Ha! <laughs> See what I did there? See what I did there? See what I did there? <laughs> it's important to have a balanced diet to stay strong during your trip. You can even have, yes, dessert like freeze-dried ice cream. What else? We've got peaches, cereal, oh, shrimp cocktail in a bag. How fancy and unexpected almonds orange juice and look oh my gosh look that they have the scissors for cutting the the fork the spoon the knife but do you notice these strips that's velcro they've and, and this is these are strips of velcro or maybe it's glue but it's to keep the food from 
floating away in outer space. Now, this is what a space toilet looks like. Ba ba ba! Wow! It looks so uh, uh, complicated. Well, let's take a look here. There's a light. Uh, there's instructions. There's thigh restraint. Once again, to put over your legs when you sit so that you don't float up and away from your toilet seat. Um, <clears throat> dry wipes. Uh, there's the other thigh restraint for your other thigh because you have two thighs. And then, well, here you have a vacuum for solids and a hose for liquids. And oh, footholds to hold your feet down again to keep for that whole flying off your toilet situation. And here is what your spacesuit will look like. Oh, I hope they have one in bear size. <laughs> Excited. Let's see. We've got, oh, look at this. This is so cool. There's a TV camera and a headlamp in there and a portable life support system backpack. They call it short PLSS and that contains oxygen, battery, and water supply. The basic things you need to, to survive out there. Here's your helmet and visor, a display and con control module, flexible metal bearings allowing your arms to move even though it's a little awkward but that's how you move. A hard upper torso made from fiberglass and steel gloves of course i mean you're completely covered head to toe the lower torso assembly is made from rubber and kevlar and the boots of course boots head to toe S space suit has 12 layers 12 layers the seven inside layers protect astronauts from extreme temperatures and the spacesuit weighs 280 pounds on earth holy mackerel that's heavy how will i ever survive well, first of all, Green Bear, you'll grow and get stronger. Uh, that, that is true, but still, it's pretty heavy. Uh, yeah, but that's on Earth. You're going to wear the space suit. Oh, yeah, in space. It won't weigh like that. Okay, Whew, I feel a lot better now. Oh, good, good. I'm glad that I'm putting your mind at ease. Uh, you will wear this suit while working outside the space shuttle. Outside in space, you can't just go without all this protection because you would die. It's white to reflect the rays of the sun. It will be fitted to your exact measurements. Did you hear that, Green Bear? Oh yeah, that's good, because I have different ears from that guy. Yeah, yeah, you have bare ears. Now, over 100 measurements will be taken just of your hand alone. That is how precise, precise it is. That's why you have to study so much math and science. Everything about being an astronaut is about precision. One mistake can cost lives. Finally, it's time to blast off. Put on your orange flight suit worn for takeoffs and landings. There it is, the famous orange flight suit. And get ready to board the space shuttle. You'll have to sit for as long as three hours before liftoff while they check everything, you know. Oil, make sure there's enough Windex for the windshield. Kidding. Whoa, what's happening here? Get ready for the ride of your life. In three, two, one, blast off! And we're back. It's best to like small spaces. Yes. Don't think of it as small. Think of it as cozy. A cozy nook. Work hard and enjoy your time in space. I hear the view is quite spectacular. Okay, and that is it. Well, let's see. It gives us some extra facts back here. Can you read them, please? Please do not shortchange me. I am having to learn everything possible to go into space. All right, Green Bear, if you insist. Uh, let's see. The word astronaut comes from the Greek words astron and not, meaning star sailor. Oh, I like that. Star sailor. What, where's that from again? It's Greek. Greek. Star sailor. Very nice. To become an astronaut, a candidate must go through about two years of rigorous training. The average age of an astronaut, 34, because it takes a long time to get all the knowledge that you're going to need up there. Astronauts design the NASA mission patches that they wear on their flight suits. Isn't that cool? Each patch represents a specific mission the astronauts are to embark on. And then every design is hung at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas during a special ceremony. 
Now, while in space, you might think this is interesting. Astronauts do not change their clothing often. Hmm. Shuttles have limited space and there isn't room to pack a bunch of changes of clothes. Also, a human does not use as much energy in space to move around because of, can you guess why? I know, I know, I think I know. What do you think? Because there's no gravity? Exactly, yes! Because of zero gravity. And that means little or no sweating, so you don't have to change clothes quite as often. It's also not a fashion show up there, frankly. You're up there to work. Now, NASA's future plans include a process to recycle... Ew. What? 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 Uh, well, it's um, a process to recycle astronauts' pee-pee. Uh, yeah. Well, this way they could extract the water from it and reuse it through the mission. Not to drink! Well, probably not. Maybe to water a plant or something. Oh, scientists, they come up with some wacky ideas! Well, <clears throat> bread, for example, they say, is a common item on Earth, but in space it could be dangerous. When bread is eaten, crumbs can flake off and harm equipment or float into an astronaut's eyes. <gasps> What? Instead, astronauts use tortillas or bagels to make sandwiches. Isn't that an interesting factoid? Now, I'm going to give you one more, and then we're going to wrap up. But I think you'll like this one. Astronauts do not take traditional baths. Now we're talking. <laughs> I thought you might like that. Showers, when taken, use a suction device to suck up all the dirty water. This is because the droplets of water float away without gravity to hold them down. Astronauts often use baby wipes to clean their hands, no rinse shampoo to wash their hair, and cleansers soaked in gauzy fabric to clean the rest of their bodies. Because otherwise, all the liquids are floating around everywhere. And that is your astronaut handbook. Ready for liftoff! In three, two, one! See you next time, kid, and stay, I don't know, dreaming. Yeah, keep on dreaming, the big sky-reaching dreams. And see you next time on Kid Time Story Time. We're out of sight.